Hey guys, today I'm doing a quick video on Amazon Web Services, specifically their EC2 service, which is their compute service. So if you want to set up a server in just a few minutes without any buying any hardware or any infrastructure, any power, AC, or a data center, you go ahead and do that using a public cloud such as Amazon Web Services ETC. EC2 service. So it's a great way of setting up a server within a few minutes, install the operating system, and start getting your services going. So if you want to set up a quick web server, you could do this so fast nowadays using public cloud. So today I'm going to show you how to set up a instance, is their way of calling a virtual machine in their environment, an instance that is an Ubuntu Linux installation and how to connect to it. So just keep watching. I'll show you how quick and easy it is to start using Amazon Web Services. And today I'm just going to be using the completely free tier. So if you're new to Amazon Web Services, this is actually completely free to you to use for up to a year. So that's actually a great way to start practicing if you're brand new to this environment. And you go ahead and set up a free web server for a year, no cost. So just keep watching. I'll show you how to get started doing this. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and go to the Amazon console website. So that's AWS. Dot Amazon.com, Amazon Web Services. And on that main page, it's going to show you all the services. There's over a hundred different services Amazon Web Services actually offer, uh, anywhere from DNS to computing to app engines to databases, storage, just name it, it's there. They have a full service, really. So if you don't have an account, go ahead and create an account and log in. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my account. And you're going to notice here, they actually changed it. If you don't log in here, they actually changed the interface slightly. But so it has some of your um, common services here, some of the recently viewed services. But actually, if you click on services, it'll show you a bunch of different services. So this is just some of the this new interface that you first log into that shows you. And it actually has some great tutorials here. So I, and there's some hands-on tutorials, actually. If you look around, you might be able to find some of them. Some of them are free, some of them are not. So something to look at here. But also, let's take a look at all services, not just the recently visited services. And if you look here, there's so many services. And the ones you want to look at, I'm going to go over today, is just really the compute services. But if you're interested in some of the other services, there's actual virtual networking in here. So if you want to build a whole internal network with private servers on an internal private subnet. You can do that. You can do DNS. You can do computing. Again, a full range of software uh, services that can be offered here. So I'm going to be looking at the EC2 compute service. So if you click on the EC2 service, it brings you to this page. And if you notice, I have zero instances running. Instances is the name of pretty much virtual machines in Amazon Web Services. They refer to them as instances. So I have zero of them running. If you look on the left-hand side here, there's a number of different options here that are going to uh, interact with your instance. So anything from storage to firewall settings to static IP addresses, your network interfaces, your load. So again, DNS, there's a lot of things in here. So if I click on instances, if I had any instances running, it would list them here. So let's go ahead and click on launch instance. And it's going to bring us to this really easy to use wizard. This first step is to choose an Amazon machine image. So they actually have a bunch of pre-configured Linux and Windows um, installations here. So if you just go ahead and create a virtual machine for you or an instance with their Amazon machine image. So it's pretty much just cloning one out. So you got Ubuntu, you got uh, Red Hat, CentOS, and Windows Server. So Windows Server 2016. So depending on what kind of server you want to run, you go ahead and select it. I'm going to just choose, be sure to stay in the free tier here, because if you're new to Amazon Web Services, you could if you stay within the free tier, it's going to go ahead and not charge you anything for a year. So it's just great. So I chose the Ubuntu uh, Linux installation. The next option is choosing the computing power. Now, I'm going to again stay in the free tier, but there's a number of different virtual processing, amount of memory, and storage you can choose from. And depending on your system load, what you're going to do with the server, how much traffic, how much load, how much memory you think you might use, you're going to select a different one. And of course, the more processing power, the more memory, the more storage, the more it's going to cost. 
but I'm going to stay in the free tier myself. But if you scroll down, you can see you get um, virtual CPUs. It's essentially a single core, the number of gigs of memory. EBS is elastic block storage, so what kind of storage you're getting. SSD is flash storage. And then it shows on the last column there is your network bandwidth. So how fast you want your network bandwidth to your instance B. So of course the higher the higher throughput, of course, it's going to start costing more and more. And if you actually highlight these, it actually will give you a little summary of what this processor type is best used for. So it's giving you an idea if it's something like big data analysis or a DNS or a database server or a web server with load traffic. You know, it kind of gives you an idea which of these computing powers or which of these instant types you might want to go for. Again, if you're doing this free and you just want to learn, be sure you select the free tier eligible, eligible option. So again, that is one virtual core, one gig of memory, low to moderate network performance. So again, just put your mouse over it and it'll give you a little uh, summary about the type of processor that you're going to be running on. And once you're done with that, you can go ahead and click Next, and we can configure your instance details. Now let's take a look at configure your instance. So we could do some options here. I'm not going to go over all these in great detail because some of them are a little more advanced. But the number of instances, so if you want to start up five different instances or virtual servers, at one given time with the same configuration, you could select five here, for example. I'm just gonna do one. For networking, there's virtual private cloud. So this is where you can create that private network or private subnet and uh, configure it that way. Or you can configure actually multiple private subnets. Virtual private uh, networks are actually free or virtual private cloud is actually a free service. So you go ahead and select, select your type of network. So if depending if you want it publicly accessible or not. So you could choose auto set IP address. I can go ahead and select that. So I'm selecting um, IAM is an authentication mechanism. I'm not gonna really go into that. So you don't really need that initially. But depending on how you might wanna actually log into your virtual machine, you might wanna go into this later if you wanna use certificates. So if you want the initial state, so shutdown behavior and then accidental termination. So you wanna make sure because there are no backups um, automatically done by Amazon. So you wanna make sure you don't actually terminate or delete your instances if it's running. And we're gonna go ahead and click add storage for our next step. So at any point, you could actually review and launch, but I'm gonna go ahead and add, make sure I go over my storage. By default, you're gonna have your root file system and it selects eight gigs. Um, to remain within the free tier, you can use 30 gigs of flash storage or magnetic storage. So by default, it is the eight gigs, but you know, it's the different volume types. So again, by default, it will be flash storage. So I'm gonna add a second volume you know, it's EBS there for elastic block storage or one of the other services being offered and different volume types. Again, some of these have different um, IO speed. So you want to make sure depending what kind of server, if you're having something for like long term storage, one of the slower storage solutions might be an option and it's also cheaper. The faster your IO, the more it's going to cost for your um, instance to be running. So again, you if you want to make it cost effective, we're gonna select the free tier, but if this is a real server and you have a lot of um, disk I.O. that needs to occur, you're gonna select a faster um, disk type, volume type, to improve your overall performance of your instance. So I chose 25 gigs. To remain in the free tier, you wanna make sure you stay at 22 gigs, so. All right, so we could add a tag. This is actually useful if you're running a large number of instances. So if you're actually running maybe hundreds of instances or they start spawning on their own, you wanna make sure you give it a naming convention so you can actually group. Like if you have a number of web servers, a cluster of web servers running, you might wanna give it something that's characteristic of a web server so that way you can search and perform different tasks according to the name. Next, it's our configure our security group. And the security group is just essentially a firewall. This firewall does not exist on the instance itself. It's actually a firewall external to the instance. So it's for actually added security. So you could choose the type 
which is essentially just going to define the protocol and the port. Now, the most interesting thing to look at here is the source. So by default, SSH should be enabled. That's how you're going to connect, so right, to get that secure command line connection. But notice that 000 slash 0, that means everyone can connect in the world attempt to connect via SSH. You're going to notice a large, large numbers of failed root attempt logins if that is left at 000 slash 0, because that's just designating everyone in the world to make an attempt to log in. There will be a warning message um, that will tell you that this is not a good idea. So again, depending on where you're connecting in from, you might want to just specify your subnet you're coming from, from your company. Again, this should be a publicly accessible subnet. Don't choose your um, subnet from your wireless at home because that won't work. If that's um, pretty much a NAT setup and that's not going to actually uh, give you the information, the ability to connect the SSH, you're pretty much just locking yourself out. So again, just be careful when you select this option, the source. So let's go ahead and click review and launch. So again, it's here's the warning message. This is here about op your firewall being too open. So, you know, if you're able to lock down that source, go ahead and do that. And I already used my free tier, so you sh if you're new to this, you should not be getting this second warning message, but I already used a free tier, so I'm not eligible. But if you are, you shouldn't get that second message. So again, this is only free for a year before it starts billing you. So be sure to delete the instances if you're not using it. So there, and again, it says my Ubuntu server. It gives me the version, it gives me my storage, my processing type, and my ports that are open. And once I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and click launch. And this is actually very fast. I just took a few minutes to do. I click launch, and my server is going to be uh, started, put in queue, to be spun up. But before it actually does that, it, you do need a um, SSH certificate. And this is because there is no root or password to initially log in. The only way you can log into your server is using... Um, your private key. So we're going to generate a private and public key. So I'm going to call it um, YouTube. Um, I think I call it key. <laughs> yeah, YouTube keys. So I'm going to go ahead and download your key. You have to make sure you keep track of this file. This is the only way you're going to be able to log into your server. If you lose this file and you obviously don't have an account created initially, you're not going to be able to log into your server. So again, make sure you keep track of that key. Of course, after your initial login, you can go ahead and create a local account and SSH in with that local account. So you notice my account, my instances took a few minutes. I kind of sped this up. It took a few minutes to start up. I'm going to give it a name. Again, this is I could have done this during the uh, wizard configuration, but I'm just going to give it a name here, YouTube demo. My instance, so that's the unique identifier. And again, it gives you a little summary here of your processing type, region in the world it's running in, um, number of instances, your IP address, public DNS name. And um, one thing you could easily do here is we go over and go to their DNS um, service in Amazon for $12. Last time I checked, it was $12. You can actually create yourself a DNS um, entry, and that DNS entry could point to this IP address. So I have my public IP address. Unless I create an elastic IP address, that IP address is not guaranteed. So that public IP address can change. So I'm going to go ahead and go in and create an elastic IP. So right here in the services, elastic IP, I'm going to create a new one, and I'm going to associate it with this instance. That way, it will always have the same IP address, public IP address. So if you're going to create a DNS entry, be sure you create um, this elastic IP address first. That way, the DNS entry is associated with the correct IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and associate address. And since I only have that one instance running, you see that instance ID. If you have multiple instances running, you want to make sure you select the correct instance. Once it's associated and you go back to your instances and look at the summary, you notice the public IP address and the elastic IP addresses are now the same. So we are now ready to connect to our um, Amazon Web Service Ubuntu server. So we're going to use that key we downloaded and we're going to use PuTTY. So here we used PuTTY before, it's a completely free product. 
So here it's going to tell you use SSH. There is a um, Java SSH that you can use as well. I usually like connecting with PuTTY. So if you have a Linux machine or a Mac, you'll use that SSH command at the bottom there in bold. If you do not have a Mac, um, I'm going to recommend you use PuTTY. It's the best option. So if you notice here, it gives you a little um, explanation of the you know permissions and the command to run on a Mac. If you have a Mac, go ahead and just open up a terminal and run that bottom command. If not, we're going to go ahead and go to download PuTTY off the PuTTY website. So you go ahead and just Google PuTTY and it'll bring you to this site. I'll include this um, website URL in the comments below. So if you notice here, there's PuTTY and PuTTY Gen. So be sure you download two of these executables. PuTTY Gen is going to be used to generate, um, convert the key we downloaded into a private key. So again, this doesn't have, it's a free open source product, PuTTY, so it doesn't have the Microsoft certificate. So we're going to go ahead and run PuTTY Gen first. We're going to load the key we downloaded. So we clicked on load. And once it's loaded successfully, we're going to click Save Private Key. And this is pretty much just converting our private key. So once we have it saved, you go ahead and click that and open up PuTTY. Um, and we're going to put in the DNS entry, or you can put in just the IP address. It's a little probably a little easier to type in. And once you type in the IP address, we're going to load that private key we just generated. So under SSH authenticate, you know, browse to that private key. And again, no password is going to be entered. It's just this key that we're going to use to initially log in. And the user we initially need to log in as is Ubuntu. And depending on the instance type you're running, that username will change. So it's logging us in with the Ubuntu user. This Ubuntu user does have sudo rights, so you could sudo and I switch user to root, and then you have root level access to your instance, and you're ready to start running whatever you need to. And again, you have full root access to this, and you're able to run whatever service, open up whatever port you need. So enjoy your instance. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, subscribe to get updates, and I hope you guys set up your public cloud in your environment. It's just so amazing that nowadays you could actually administer hundreds of machines, but never actually touch any of the hardware. It can be completely in a public cloud environment. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.